And you see the amount of love that the Apostle Paul had. And you know, I forget if it's First or Second Thessalonians. We said that we were willing not only to impart the gospel of God to you, but, but our own souls. That, that, they were, that they loved them and cared about them so much. I mean, they're pouring out their souls unto these people because they want them to succeed. They want them to grow. He, they want them to see the good example, and they're willing to just sacrifice, be self-sacrificial to help them. And this is what we all need to do. Yes, you do that when you go out and take part of your time and you go out and preach the gospel to the lost. But you know what? There's probably more areas where we can do better at that, where we can do better at helping people grow. How about even just praying for the people? I love that I heard that uh, uh, earlier in the service tonight. Pray for those that got saved and pray for those that didn't, right? How about just having even that level of care and thought and focus on other people? How can we get them to succeed? How can we get more people taught and trained and discipled? Yes, lead them to Christ, but you know, what more can we do to help the people of this area? What can we do? Absolutely follow the tried and true to everything that, that, that the Bible lays out and the soul and everything else. But let's have that servant minister spirit and attitude to, to do what we can. You know what? Sometimes you might get burned. Someone might stab you in the back. Someone might take advantage of you. Welcome to Christianity. Don't let that discourage you. Yeah, it's sad when it happens. No one likes when it happens. No one likes getting stabbed in the back. It's not fun. But you can't let that let get you out. That doesn't change. When people do bad to you, that doesn't change what's right. Ever. Never changes what's right. It's just like, I give this advice over and over and over again in my sermons on marriage. Right? The Bible tells us husbands and wives have, your, have the specific roles laid out. You can read Ephesians chapter 5. But you know what? Don't let the actions or inactions of your spouse determine whether or not you're going to be right with God in your role. Yeah. Wives, if your husband's a jerk and he doesn't love you self-sacrificially, the Bible, the, the, the Bible says he ought to love me. How about you be submissive and obedient the way the Bible says? Because that's what you can do, and that's what you can control, and you can follow Christ and not worry about what someone else does. How about, you know, vice versa? Men, well, my wife's not listening to me. She's not being very obedient. She's not doing what she's supposed to be. You know what? You love them self-sacrificially anyways. You love them the way that Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. That's what you're called to do. And whatever other areas you have in life. I mean, that's just one that's really easy to bring up because, you know, for everyone that's married, that's something that probably comes up every day. <laughs> it's something that everyone could, can use to grow and, and help your marriage, right? To say, look, I'm going to focus on what I can do. Okay, you can't control what other people do. I'm going to serve the Lord to the best of my ability. And if other people don't, that's on them. I'm going to serve the Lord to the best of my ability. And whatever John does and whatever Peter does and whatever, you know, anyone else does, what is that to me? I'm going to follow Christ. 